Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. It's another side job Saturday and we're working on my own truck, 2001 Chevy Silverado 3500. Just hit 300,000 miles, so I wanna do some service to the rear end. I've been neglecting that over the rest of the truck. These tires are just about end of life. We're not gonna put those back on. So these trucks came with the AAM 11 and a half inch rear, just like the Dodge Cummins trucks do. It's a very good rear, though the GM setup for the dualies is a pain in the ass. The reason for that is the drum is behind the hub. So like on a single rear wheel Duramax, the drum is on in front of the hub, so you just pull the wheel off, pull the caliper, you can just slide the, the rotor off. For this, we gotta disassemble the whole thing. That's all right though, because I need to get in here and put new bearings in it anyway, as well as make an e-brake adjustment. The e-brake adjustment, monster pain in the ass as well. You have to disassemble, disassemble all of this just to get to the little adjuster on the e-brake. Oh, that ain't the right size. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the caliper off with the bracket on it. I'm not actually putting pads in this today. Uh, the pads are fairly fresh, but I didn't have rotors available last time I had this apart. So I got Napper dropping off some rotors here, hopefully soon. Uh, really, the intent of today is I was doing a little maintenance on the truck, and I noticed on the driver's side there was a little bit of play in the rear wheel bearing. Can't be taking any chances of spinning a bearing on the housing or, or whatever, so... Just want to take care of this while I can before it's too late. But I will take you guys along for the ride so you can experience my misery and maybe see what not to do on your dually. So this fluid I just put in at 260,000 miles. We're at 300 something now. So really it's got 40,000 miles on that fluid and it just looks very dirty, much more dirty than I was expecting. Now, if you have both sides apart, don't mix up your axle shafts. Now, this part comes across nice. You just take a pick and you're gonna pull this retaining clip out of here like this. And then there is a square keyway that locks your bearing preload nut. You slide that out with needle nose. And then you'll need a special socket, which I'll put a link in the description, to actually remove this nut. I want to see, I usually, see how I went to the right first? I kind of wanted to get a feel for how much slop was in these. Um, so this, this was okay. This was essentially set up correctly. The other side, this nut was very, very loose. I was able to get like a half a turn on it. So something's coming apart in the bearings over there. So that's why I'm kind of doing this job. But anyway, that's more for just a sanity check. See where I'm at. Get an idea of what I'm gonna find in here. Okay, so you can see the keyway grooves in there. The nut will only lock up like six ways. So uh, you can never get it perfect. You just get it close. Now, I got lucky on that one. That just slid out pretty easily. Sometimes you have to use a slide hammer. And we'll see what the seal looks like in here, and that will probably that'll determine why this came off so easy. So this one came off easily, and you can see that the inner lip of the seal is still on here. Looking down in here, disregarding the fluid we just put, this is wet. So this seal has been leaking anyway. So typically anytime this rotor comes off, I put new seals in. There's it's very risky to try to reuse them. So I have new seals ready to go. Uh, these are done though. So now you're into the parking brake shoes. You can see there's an adjuster here. And here's the crappy thing about a dually. If you look, you can see there's a hole back there and you think, oh yeah, I'll just get my little brake spoon through there to adjust this. Now you won't. There's a huge casting there that blocks the whole thing. That hole is fake news and it can't actually be used. So that means literally you have to do, pull this entire thing apart just to put two more clicks on the parking brake. 
That's why I feel like there's probably a lot of Duramaxes rolling around that don't have working parking brakes, and you might get away with it for the automatics, but with the stick, I use the parking brake every day. I really need it to work. So um, inspect your shoes while you're in here. These are getting thin, but they're not coming off the backing plates. Everything's still bonded well, springs look good, all that. So we're gonna reuse those. So to get this remaining seal race off, I usually try to pull them, hit them with a pry bar, but you can never get them off. So very, very, very carefully, grinder with a cutoff wheel. You wanna just get through the race, or most of the way, but do not touch the axle housing. Then you can split this thing. And now, comes right off of there, and no damage to the actual axle housing. So the last thing you do in here is just inspect your bearing surfaces. Make sure that a bearing never locked up and spun on here and tore these up. This has to be a nice fit between the bearing and the stub, and everything looks good there. So using a big brass punch, 32 ounce hammer, we're gonna knock the rear bearing out, which is gonna take the seal out with it. All right, so there's your inner roller bearing. Looks good, but I'm gonna replace it anyway. We'll clean it up and inspect uh, for fun. And then here's what's left of that inner seal. So you can see that this thing's essentially gutted. Here's a new seal here. And these are like a two-part seal, right? They're fully like self-contained. So the inner part spins, or the outer part spins with the rotor, and then the inner part stays fixed on the axle. Uh, what I do is I press this back into the, the rotor and hub here and then push it onto the axle and it stays. If you never move it, you're fine. Uh, if you do have to pull this thing apart and the seal separates and you put it back together, it's probably gonna leak on you. I've never really had luck with it. But if you have a trick or technique for that, let me know, I'd love to hear it because these are like 16 bucks a piece and you pretty much waste one every time you gotta pull the hub off. Now we're gonna work the rear inner race out. This fluid is just sticky and greasy, kind of like it's been overheated a few times and I wouldn't be surprised if it was. So I don't know if the pitting is visible in the camera or not, but this bearing is, it's time to be replaced before it turns into a breakdown on the side of the road and it complicates an already sketchy situation. So inside here, there's a clip that has to be removed to get the outer bearing out. I'm gonna try it, but we may end up having to get snap ring pliers in here potentially. It's kind of far down there. This is definitely an awkward one. <clears throat> Everything just is a pain in the butt with this setup. This clip will piss you off. Now with that out, we should be able to use the inner part of the bearing to drive the outer through. That's my hope. Outer race, similar condition. She's seen a couple contaminants in her life, but it was holding together. It's interesting, when you first look at these bearings, you know, things may look okay, but we got to this particular part on this roller and there is heavy failure there. Heavy flaking, lost a chunk of the roller. So that's why we're doing this. Um, you know, the bearings are not that expensive. I'll go over all that later, but if you're in here and you've got high miles on the truck, it's just worth doing this now because all this fluid is shared with the differential and the ring and pinion. So when you're putting shards of wheel bearing, bearing into the fluid, it's making its way back to the diff and we don't want to go down that route because that's a pain, but we will if we have to. All right, so now we're over here in a 20 ton hydraulic press. And we have to start pressing our studs out to get our rotor off the hub. He 
Yeah, she popping. So if you've got crap stacked all over your press like I do, you won't for long. God damn! Might need a beer after that. It is a lot of work pushing all those out. Ow. We can start to separate. They are bull nose, so you can hammer on them a little bit. Also, you want to be inspecting your shanks for like rust degradation. I've seen them where they start to neck down here due to rust. Don't be that guy, you're this deep, replace them. So here is the actual AAM 11.5 dually hub. It was a lot of work to get to that. This is the rotor. We're gonna roll this aside. Napa should have our new ones here soon, hopefully. Just gonna check over all these studs, make sure they're worth reusing. I don't know what they cost new. Um, they're probably not wildly unreasonable, but they are very important because you're holding two rear wheels on with it. You might you might be putting 10,000 pounds on this rear axle, so um, don't cheap out on studs. So now you want to clean this stuff up. Remember that this is your rotor mating surface here. So this rust between here needs to go. You want that rotor to sit really nice on here. And then same with your wheel mounting flange. Mine's in pretty bad shape, but you can never really clean it with all these studs here. So this is your time without the studs in here. Get down, clean this up nice. Clean up your axle mating surface. Clean up the center board to your inside wheel. Clean up your seal area. Just clean, clean, clean. You're only gonna be in here once, hopefully, so do it right. Not sure if you guys can see the metal flake in here. Yep. So that's bearing material that hopefully remained in the axle tube and in the bearing, but I'm gonna drain the fluid out of the rear anyway. I'm not sure that I wanna to get to pulling the pumpkin out and inspecting those bearings today, but I definitely think that's something that needs to happen. All right, this hub is ready for fresh bearings and fresh rotor. I'm gonna set it aside and get the other side ready. All right, so the other side, I started pressing it and I was like, oh, these are coming out like butter, so. Probably this rotor's been replaced once more than the other has or whatever. Uh, those studs weren't in as hard, so I'll take it. China's finest. I hope these last a couple years. I have not had good luck with cheap rotors, but you know, I didn't have any other options other than to order up some local, local Napa China. Drop that thing on there. Start two studs just to keep this thing together. And we'll set it with the punch.
studs are all tight, rotors locked onto the hub, now it's time to reassemble. So remember your outer bearing, you gotta drop your bearing cone in, then the race, and then press the race down, because this whole thing's kind of retained in there. There's no way to put the cone in after the race is in, unlike uh, more traditional axles. Got to get the death clip in now. All right, that actually went pretty good. A little easier going in than out. I've been noticing this brand Schaeffler showing up, which I wasn't familiar with, but they are, uh, I guess they're the new fag brand uh, for bearings, but they also, I don't know, in the box with this one are NTNs, so you never really know what you're getting. Um, you want to try to get Japanese or American made bearings. I struck out on the outer bearings here. I had to get Chinese, which totally sucks. Chinese SKFs. Um, but hopefully if SKFs are willing to put their name on it, they're made to some type of decent standard. Presumably got 300,000 miles out of the USA made Timkins that GM put in this thing. So I'm going to be pretty butt hurt if these bearings don't last. With the full outer bearing pressed in and just the inner race pressed in, we're gonna stop there and move to the parking brake adjustment. So I just slipped the inner bearing onto the spindle. No seal, because like I said, we're gonna be putting this on and off like 10 times. You wanna have all this adjusted perfectly before you put that seal in and push it on for the final time. Like that. You can put your spindle nut on to hold this all together. Um, being that I really want this e-brake to work, I'm going to set up a nice gentle drag on it, kind of like you hear now. But I'm going to go a little further than that. So with both rotors on and the parking brake close, I'll go engage it a bunch of times. Just to get everything seated. Getting slack taken out of the cables, whatever. So I can tell already I want to go more because I don't want the pedal going that low. And then now that this is seated, look, turns nice and easy again. So I'll pull it back off, couple more clicks on the adjuster, do that on the other side until it's perfect. All right, so with the e-brake finally to a point that I'm happy with, it's time to put this rear seal in and be done with this. So I told you earlier, it's two piece seal, right? See how this part is staying fixed. That would be your axle. This part would be your hub. When you're putting this in, if you dent this sheet metal here, it will dig into this rubber ring and the whole seal will fail. So pressing this in, you gotta be careful as well. They are only pressing on the rolled outer lip. So what I do with these, I just take something big that's much bigger than it. So this is a uh, adapter for a wheel balancing machine. And I'll drop that in there and then just kind of just beat her down. Just like that, nice and simple. And then you see that this still turns freely inside here, so we didn't damage the seal putting it in. And now you get to watch me get pretty butt hurt and maybe ruin this new seal because I forgot to put the bearing in before I put that in because it's still hanging on the axle shaft from all the e-brake fitting. So don't be that guy. Learn a lesson from me. Make sure you drop that inner bearing in before you press the seal in. So I did build this tool for this reason. So you only see these on GMs. I think the 14 bolt is similar or maybe even the same if I remember right. So we got lucky, maybe we got lucky, or maybe I've just screwed this up before. So I already had this tool. It's basically a uh, smash down piece of round stock with a lip on it. You gotta get it at the right angle that you can come in here and kind of pop under the lip of this seal to make it happen. So 
Uh, not only on Spank Ranch Garage do we show you how you're supposed to do it, but then also how to recover from screwing it up like an idiot. A little oil just to wet that outer bearing. Blowing this crap everywhere. Inner bearing. And I'll put this seal back in again. Whew, this tow truck driver is always getting it. DT466. Back in business now, baby. Now I'm just working my way in here. Half a turn at a time until it's seated. And then we'll put some torque on it, make sure the bearing races are seated into the hub. But now that she's in and bottomed, um, everything's good, so I'm going to give this a little bit of torque. I think they say like 50 foot-pounds, but we'll just lean on her a little. It's probably 100 foot-pounds, something like that. Still turns. See if she takes any more. Oh yeah, see that? It takes a lot more. So there was a bearing cup that wasn't totally seated. And that's why we do this, because if you were to just snug that down and went down the road, this thing would have opened up big time. Oh, it feels like that hit a wall again. Still turns though. Yeah, that's it. All right, so now we know everything's seated and happy. We will back this off. And we end up hand tight. We're going hand tight. Let's see where we land. We're a little past the notch. So we're gonna roll that back. Roll it forward. Damn. Hello. So we hand tight, back it off till the key lines up, and that's it. Don't forget your retaining clip. That holds your key in, and you're done here. Now the GM AAMs have fill plug and drain plug, which is kind of cool. You can change the fluid without having to pull the rear cover. Damn, look at how black that is. This is really having me question my maintenance program here and I'm just seeing how much metal is on the magnet here nothing that I'm too worried about so I'm not going to pull the cover I did buy a gasket to pull the cover and spec bearings and gears but maybe I'll do that 30,000 miles from now we'll just give this a refill and go now before we can fill this we got to throw our axle back in <clears throat> I usually just RTV these However, I have a ton of extra gaskets for the 14 bolts, and I'm pretty sure they're the exact same. Uh, that's the part number, 55350. But it says Chevy truck rear axles, you know, 73 to 95. And I think it's perfect for the new AAMs as well. Well guys, the whole reassembly of this is exactly the same as taking it apart. You know, just ram these axle bolts in, put your brake caliper back on, and have a good day. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage on Side Job Saturday. While you guys are off the hook, I got a lot more work to do out here. So if you're interested in watching me uh, change wheels and tires on this truck and a couple other things, stay tuned. But if not, I'll catch you next time on Side Job Saturday. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage.
So tires for this truck. Uh, I guess the long story is I bought this thing sight unseen out in Idaho. I had my buddy Ryan drive it back for me. But right away, uh, we bought it. it was, the tires were bald. Like, the rear tires were literally bald to where it was unsafe to drive it. <clears throat> so out there, he found a Costco that had tires in stock. I think it was a Costco. And we had these put on. Uh, what are they? Michelin Agilis or whatever. Uh, they were put on at 252000 I'm at 300500 now. So you're looking at, like, 48,500 miles. Always in the rear on a dually, and these things are bald. They're down to 230 seconds. They're just hammered. But they did wear nice. They worked well for me, and they did the job because we, we had to get tires to get the truck home. So they weren't my first choice, though I'm not mad about it. Um, I am just a little shocked, I guess, that they only lasted, you know, 48,000 miles. Just because I've never done a burnout with this truck, you know, Half the miles are unloaded, half the miles are very heavily loaded. Something to be aware of is these are actually trailer wheels. And this, this was brought to my attention uh, later without knowing. Um, these are actually not truck wheels. These are just straight up dually trailer wheels. And it's okay, I mean they say inside the wheel it's stamped, says do not use, you know, it's for trailer use only. Eh, I'm not worried about that. Um, but what you need to know is that these wheels are not lug centric. So these wheels use a lug like this, right? And this is a factory GM lug, I think. Um, I don't know, I don't know what these trucks came with back in 2001. But anyway, you need a flat face lug like this because there is no taper here. The issue with that is these 2001 to 2009 11 and a half rear axles for the dualies are only hub centric for the first wheel. The hub pilot is not long enough to grab the second wheel. So what was happening was the, the inside wheel was running true to the axle. The outside wheel had the ability to move around on these studs and you'd have that, you know, that potential play there. So the truck was driving really nice and I took it to get it inspected somewhere and they pulled the rear duels to check the brakes or whatever. When they put it back together, the truck rode like crap. I had this like hop in the rear at 40 miles an hour, it was out of control. So I put it up on jack stands and looked at it and I'll be damned, that outer duel was flying all over the place. So towards the end, what I was doing was I would use a tapered lug. I'd put two tapered lugs in here to, to true it up, then I'd run these on, but it's just not the way to do it. So anyway, future state, we're gonna keep two of these trailer wheels as my inner duels. I grabbed two aluminum eBay jobbies for the back here. They'll look a lot better but also they take a proper tapered lug nut. So my wheels will then be concentric to the axle on both the inner and the outer dual. And then for tires, I'm going with the Transforce HT2s, the Firestones. Um, I, I really like these tires because they're dirt cheap, they ride awesome, and they seem to last a fairly long time. I've got a pair on the front of this truck. I think they were like $130 each that's delivered from Amazon. They ride great and these have about 30,000 miles on them and they're at about half tread. So they're at about a half, half tread here, 30,000 miles, and they are on the front of a GM truck. So you know how that goes with chop and wear and everything and ball joints and tie rods and yada yada yada. So I think they're performing pretty well. I'm curious to see how they're going to do in a dually application. Um, I've heard that dualies wear tires faster in the rear. I never would have expected that, being that, you know, when the truck's unloaded, each tire is taking such a small amount of load, but maybe they do, I don't know. Um, that's what I'm still learning, and I gotta find out. So these Max Dual 2,700 pound tire, uh, the wheels are rated at 3,600. So what? That's about a little over 10,000 pounds on the rear axle. I don't really exceed that anyway, so I think these tires will be just what we need. Quite an improvement over the old steelies there, but also shows me how bad of condition my old aluminums are. Oh. 
most of their weight on the inside where no one's gonna see it except for YouTube and me. On my last steel wheel, of course, this thing is really hopping. I think this wheel's bent. <sighs> Wants a lot of weight, and I just don't love, I don't love that. It'd also be nice to get the aluminum wheels because that's a brand new tire on this steel trailer wheel. You're looking at about 79 pounds. 79 to 63, so 16 pounds difference. That's 64 pounds over the truck if you went all four aluminum wheels. 64 pounds of rotating mass is kind of no joke. All right, so these wheels take a standard cone lug now. So, luckily I got plenty of length. So that means my inner wheels are hub centric. My Outer wheels are lug centric. Whether or not that's typical or correct, I don't know, but it's a hell of a lot better than what I had before with the outer wheel just flopping around. Son of a bitch. I bolt the wheels up and they don't roll anymore because these steel inners apparently have a different internal geometry and they don't clear the calipers or the caliper brackets on both sides. So now I'm definitely removing these and putting them on those other wheels that look absolutely horrendous but at least I know they clear because they've been on here. That freaking sucks. This is super frustrating. You got this wheel here and you got this wheel here. <clears throat> I grabbed these two because they looked nicer. Joke's on me. This part tapers up a little too soon, hits the caliper, where this one Happens a little deeper. I test fitted this. This has been on the truck for 50,000 miles. I know it works. It's like, God damn. And these wheels are just gross, but I guess that's what's going on. Um, I didn't realize I was in such a wheel crisis here, but it is what it is. Dismount these two, dismount these two, mount these tires on these wheels, rebalance. More wasted time. All right. I'm ready to be done with this freaking job. Now it's side job Sunday and this was never the intent. good so far um, tires definitely ride smoother but I know these firestones are just so soft it almost feels a little uh, squirmy just because I don't know they got like 13 30 seconds of tread well anyway guys that's a wrap on this one thanks for watching if you're still here uh, it's just kind of a turd that spiraled out of control like most jobs that I have to do so anyway, thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. If you guys have any suggestions for aluminum inner rear dual wheels for one of these GMs, I'm curious of uh, where you're buying them from or where I can get some. Got to do something about those rear wheels. Got to figure out something to do for a spare tire. So I'm going to carry one of those old trailer wheels as a spare and just keep some flat face lugs in my toolbox and Hopefully it clears the front caliper if I ever get a front flat. It was always just my plan to take a rear wheel and flip it, put it in the front if I had to. Uh, but now seeing that uh, I had a bastard set of wheels that don't fit, and I have a, now I have an aluminum set of rear wheels that can't be flipped, uh, my spare tire options are a little tighter now than they used to be. So, Curious what you guys think about that, if you have any experience with it. If not, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage.